The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growl and a problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 15, Nasdaq's up 29, S&P's up 5.5, Gold's up 350, trading at 14.71 an ounce. You got silver up four cents, sixteen dollars seventy-five cents an ounce. Light sweet crude, fifty-nine dollars thirteen cents a barrel. They finally got the Saudi Aramco deal off, and it traded higher, right? They they it went up limit, up ten ten percent. Nobody, none of those Saudis are selling. No, they're, no, they're not. They're not they don't want to be man. hanging out in the Ritz anytime they, soon. They, they're going to get that up the limit until exactly. it's two, worth two trillion dollars. Exactly. Notes and bonds. You get the ten year up one tick, one twenty-eight thirty-one. The thirty year up seven at one fifty-eight oh nine. Now both notes and bonds, folks. Last two days. They went up there with light volume. That's telling me they're going to go test last Friday's lows. That's telling me that this market's going to go after its highs. King dollar. King dollar, uh, 43 ticks, trading 97.455. The euro is at 110. The yen is at 108.5. And, and the pound is at 131.79. And we're going to have some uh, pound. Well, we've had pound action anyway, but tomorrow. We've got forget. a lot of action, man. We got Fed a day lot today, of UK election tomorrow. Why not? Let's go to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TD Ameritrade. Think of Swim as we do every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. If you want to understand the options market, you want to understand option strategies, futures, outstanding program, folks, 11 to 12. If you haven't test driven yet the Think of Swim platform, so easy to do. You're on our site right now. Just hit the banner, bring it up. They'll allow you to trade with paper money. You can follow Kevin and his team as they set up these strategies each and every day. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. Well, we didn't get, you know, on a day where I really think the bonds are going to be in focus and should be in focus. The first number that came out, the CPI, really didn't do anything to move them right. very much, frankly. Right. Uh, the headline number was a little hot, but most traders go right to the core, the ex-food and energy, and that number came in right in line, 0.2, 2.3 year over year. Uh, it just what it just didn't get anyone's heart rate up, frankly, yeah. in the bond market. And you saw the one-minute candles, and the bonds were very muted. So, so now Jerome Powell, your table's ready. <laughs> right? Yeah, come in what one thirty Chicago time, two thirty your time. Let's see what you got for us, Jerome. Yeah, what, what's that normally, in the new world that we live in, uh, he's going to have a press conference. He wouldn't. Normally, if there wasn't going to be a, a rate change, but now he's going to talk. So right. hopefully he'll address some of the issues out there like repo rates and, oh. and the actual strength or weakness of the economy, whatever he sees. No, I, there's no doubt. And it's, you know, it's intriguing, Kevin. I, I'm still really bullish bonds. But the way the bond market's traded the last couple of days, man, we're not done going down, man, down on price. Right. So it's like, okay, man. And then I'm looking at the S&P. We're right next to the highs, man. This oh, thing, yeah. like, it, it could be any second that we either get tariff news or we get some kind of news, and I think this thing is going to blow right into the highs. And uh, it's like Apple just hit a brand new high. Okay. Apple straightened. I mean, this, look at it this morning, right? Hey. And let's yeah. face it, Tom. If you base your investment strategy off, don't fade the Fed. A one eight two ten year yield yeah. isn't scaring you. No. away from high dividend yield, yielding stocks. Yeah. So there's no real pressing reason to exit stocks r right now based on that 10-year yield. Now, stocks can still go up with a rising 10-year yield, but the pace of that rise is vitally important, as you know. It, it's got a, a spiking 10-year will scare stocks. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> the, the, risk, the risk going forward is that 10-year not, not going up, but going up to, at, at too fast a pace, I believe. Yeah, no. You know, it's amazing. I mean, we, we talk about it a lot, but we are definitely used to rates that are at this level. And I don't think any of us would know what to do if, you know, you went to three, three and a half percent again. I mean, you know, right. realistically. It'd be a readjustment the market, norms. Frankly, yeah. if it went there too quickly. Yeah. Now, if it does it over the next 18 months, 
I don't know if that'll scare the market. Yeah. I think the mar you know, with, with good economic news and data and earnings, we can get to three and three and a half and not scare the overall market. You know, it could be a flat year for stocks with good earnings and higher rates. I could see that potentially happening. Well, you know, it's so wild, man. Like, I remember, you know, in the 70s, okay, when inflation really started, one yep. of the hottest things to get your head wrapped around, folks, was that rates, you know, started going up. Like, I remember them, like, they went from 5 to 14. And the hard thing to get your head wrapped around was that rates were going up. But because everything else was going up, that's when you really had to understand what is the real rate of return. Yes. And you had to subtract one from the other because what was happening is that hard assets were going to the moon. Yep. And bottom line is that, you know, even, you know, well, equities were getting killed until 1980, okay? Um, but that, that correlation is really yeah. important to understand. It doesn't matter you know? what you're making on your money if you're just spending that money for the same cost of and, living, and right? You, and you're getting more money out of it. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? So it's, it's pretty wild. Uh, There's just a lot, you know, low interest rates. And we, you know, you can have that debate, Tom. Are we ever going to see rates, you know, as high as they were when Paul Volcker was chairman in, in, in the 70s? Who knows? But never say never. If we've learned anything in this business, Tom, between the length of your career and the length of mine, yeah. never, ever it, it, say it, never. It, there's no, it, that, that's a fact, man. In fact, I was looking this morning on the news. One of the big broker dealers, I was, I was looking at it, and they were selling their automated option business. And I was wondering, like, you know, okay, so that gets kind of intriguing. Like, you know, what does exactly that mean? And, you know, I, I, I didn't dig into it enough. So, um, but that, that was intriguing in itself. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, okay. Right, right. You know. It may be automated option trading has got to be where you're posting the bid ask and hedging automatically when you trade and things like that, you know, where, where you're okay, so where really auto, market making business, your, right? your, your markets are adjusting via, via, via computer trading, basically. Yeah, right. Basically a market making business that you're, you're basically, yeah, no doubt. So uh, Home Depot, Home Depot come in a little bit light, right? Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, what's going to be intriguing here, folks, is that if you, if you look at Toll Brothers, okay, you know, a lot of this, you know, when we start breaking this down, you're going to see this is a lot of this has to do with the West Coast. The West Coast is so expensive. You know, Toll Brothers, they come in light in California in a huge way, and they're large in California, but their, their average house is 830000 It's like, average house is eight thirty. That's a monster right. number, man. That's quite a price tag. That's, that's a huge number. And so, a few weeks ago, we broke that all down on Fast Market, how, how really who might be set up the best for this environment that we're in now is, is D.R. Horton. Yes, because oh, their time. average house price is much lower in the two forties, I believe. Yeah, and and that may be that magical price that can get millennials out, you know, buying a house and something they can afford at least for the starter. No, and yeah. I think that's where you know the the next boom in housing is is those starter homes. Oh, yeah. there's, there's no doubt because we're all buying houses with a signature. You yep. know, yep. You, you hear plenty of times people paying cash, but those are investment funds. Those are you know. It's the signature, folks. It's the supply versus demand. Okay, Definitely. you know what can you afford? What's the payment? Right. You know, uh, bottom line. Right. You know what I saw yesterday, Kevin, which is pretty cool, folks. Okay, in Park City, they have, their houses have got so expensive that this is a ski slope. But now there's a company coming in making 300 square foot little places, right? Okay. With big places that you know you get halls and bars and all this. And those are right beside, and they're, they're the 300 square foot places, they're selling for five or 600000 Oh, boy. But that's inexpensive compared to a regular chalet. You can't buy anything else in Park City, I bet, right? No, Not even close. No, yeah. No. Unreal. Folks, right here, 45 minutes from now, outstanding program. Kevin, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the program. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks, Thank Kevin. You. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow right now is up three. You get the NASDAQ up 27. S&Ps are up four and a half. So I heard on when you're just doing that update, uh, Boeing. So what's happening with Boeing here? Go figure. Boeing, a little bit more optimistic than might have been realistic. You got the FAA chief out there saying recertification going to be going into 2020. Uh, everything Boeing has been putting out, yeah. saying that they hope, or I, I don't know the verbiage they used. It was pretty strong verbiage. They anticipate, they hope that they will have yes. that recertified by the end of this year. It was always kind of skeptical, especially because the airlines in particular had already cleared that plane off of their schedule right. well into 2020. Uh, so the only people you had saying that was Boeing. And, of course, it comes out FAA chief. Um, can we just scroll up a little yeah. bit? Because you have the quote, if you do the math, it's going to extend into 2020. That's the FAA um, administrator Stephen Dixon told CNBC on Wednesday, hours, hours before he's expected to testify before the congressional panel. We're going to do it dil diligently because safety is absolutely our priority with this airplane. They should say now. I'm not sure if it always has been, unfortunately. Yes. Um, but yeah, looks like the U.S. government approvals needed to return that 737 MAX. The skies won't be completed until next year. And what's happening here, you know, they came out about a month ago, uh, the FAA, this is, and they're not going to let them self-certify. Okay. And that's a big, you know, it means that... It better yeah. be, man. Right. I don't know how that, oh. right? And so Boeing this morning, you can see kind of sliding. Yesterday, you were up there at about 348, and the slide, as that news came out, down to a low of 338, currently sitting 341. Uh, I have the chart at Disney up here. I saw a headline this morning on CNBC, so not sure what exactly this means, but yeah. uh, one kind of tracking company talking about that they expect that there's already been 22 million downloads 
of the Disney Plus service. Now, I don't know if you have to be a subscriber okay. to download it, right? You can probably download the app, but then you got to log you in, up. right? You yeah, got to log right, in. Right. Um, but it would be the same way that why would you download the right. Netflix app? Oh, yeah. Unless you're at least interested, at least considering right. signing come up. Come back to it. Uh, so, and you got Disney trading up about a percent on that. And it's Christmas that time. News. It's holiday time. There's going to be so many films that people want to watch, too. And you got kids home. For yeah. the holidays. Oh, yeah. Check it out, right? And um, it's remarkable. I was saying right. yesterday there was the news. So they had, uh, what was the movie with Elsa and Anna that just came? Frozen 2, I believe. Okay. Uh, that almost put Disney, we were talking about earlier in the week, at $10 billion for box office sales this year alone. And they have a Star Wars movie coming out December 20th, man. Wow. Uh, and so you add all that revenue on top of it, then that library of content right. turns into, it goes right into there. And Netflix doesn't have... Ten billion dollars of revenue that they're pulling in from movie theaters, that then they get to just put into their content. No, so it'll be interesting I've, to see. I told you I've been watching Amazon, but now I'm hip. Prime, to it. okay. Yeah, and you know I'm watching Jack Ryan. Okay, okay I've heard that's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> it is good. Nice. It is good. There's lots of choices, man. There, lots of there choices. There is. It's, it's... We were talking about yesterday Discovery, right? Uh, yeah. The guy who, oh, is, who was Steve in charge. Of, yeah, well, Curiosity yeah. Stream, I believe, yeah, was right. theirs. Uh, another competitor, just stuff everywhere for sure. Right. So, oil. Let's oil. Uh, let's get in the oil market. Let's do it, man. So, it is Wednesday. We get the crude oil numbers as if we don't have enough going on today. Uh, we get crude numbers, 10.30 a.m. It's 10.21 right now, so we got about eight, no, eight minutes until we get those inventory numbers. Crude, a little bit of volatility today. You back things up to yesterday. We made it up to a high of 59.50. We talked about how the Saudi Aramco deal, uh, they get a pop on the open the largest market value of a company. I think it's 1.8 now it's up to yeah. trillion dollars. Uh, you won't see any of those insiders selling anytime soon unless they want to knock on the door from the Saudi police. Yeah, uh, MB1, right? Oh, right. Uh, so we'll MBS, get it. Right? Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, crude oil, we're looking at the January contract. We're trading at 59.15 right now. Jumping to, let's see where the 11 AMs line up for expirations. Would have... Exposure from $59 if we want, not a, not a bad price point in terms of about 15 cents in the money to the bullish side. If you want to set up a volatility trade, this would be your bullish spread, 59 to 60.50. And it's kind of cool if you were just bullish, not a bad trade, man. You're paying about eight pennies in premium. The contract's at 59.15. Yeah. You're buying at 59.23, and you're capped at losses at 59. And you got to keep in mind here that this is with the inventory number dropping at 10.30. Uh, with upward exposure right. all the way to 6050. The bearish side of that, you're going to be a little bit out of the money, so you're going to be paying a little bit more premium, as in you're paying 15 plus the nine cents, so you're paying 24 cents on the bearish side. So, and I say paying 24, right? You're paying nine, but you're 24 cents away from exactly. the market. And so you're looking and at... If you're bearish, that's still not bad. That, no. That's, it's only costing you nine bucks, right? It is. Oh it is. God. Now, you got 24 pennies to, yeah. before you get to break even, right? right? Um, but pretty cool how that well, lines up. When you look up. at that chart, it was no. 24 pennies like six hours ago. Yes, and yeah. again, you got the numbers coming at 10.30 right now. Let's just see where the noons line up. So a little bit different price point, which is nice here. So on the 11 a.m. spread, you had a little bit of a bullish bias potentially because you were 15 cents in the money to the bullish side. You can set up a real similar trade on the bearish side, though, because 59.25 becomes your pivot point. So this time, you would be buying the bullish spread, but this time you're out of the money on the bullish side, so that gets yeah. a little bit cheaper, but you got to make up that room in terms of you're buying at 59.41, the market's at 59.14, you're paying 16 bucks on that bullish spread trade, and the bearish one is the one that now has your intrinsic value. Not a bad bearish trade if you really want to, you're selling it at 59, call it, yep. market's at 59.15, right. you're capped out at 59.25. I like those trades, and this one goes till noon too, right? Right. So I like those trades when you're getting an inventory number, oh, yeah. you're capped at, at relatively affordable losses, and you have a buck fifty in terms of potential. And let's just see. Uh, so the number we're looking for, crude oil inventories, they're looking for a decline. And I'm going to put it in because okay. we got 15 seconds. We're going to add that negative number, 2250. We're going to split the difference between the median analyst estimate of a bond decline of 3 million barrels, okay. and the whisper number, a little bit weaker than that, a decline of 1.5. And before we jump around, interesting draw on crude yeah. and gasoline looking for a surplus of anywhere between about 2.5 million and 3.3 million barrels. Okay, so CL active contract. Let's see what we got here. Yep. So you're 
been having a hard time with the 60 bucks, but it's still over the 58.74 level. Oh, look at this. This doesn't say a thing. And that was the OPEC news that we had on Friday. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Saudis cutting even additional, and surprise, surprise, ahead of the initial IPO for Saudi Aramco. But it's held up there. It has held. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we'll see how it shakes out. It, yeah. it, it, it almost looks like it, it does want to spike up there. I mean, it's been up there four days. It's been right hanging now. for a while. Yeah. It has. It's been up there four and, days. And um, so. you got to know there's a trading desk somewhere in Saudi Arabia that's going to be buying oil if that thing begins to plummet. Oh, yeah. At least for the foreseeable future. No doubt. Yeah. So let's go. One of the tigers is just saying we get a spike in the metals. And we did. Look at that. Silver is amazing, man. That's just like a, a maniac. <laughs> yeah. Up 16 cents. We were just up four. Um, there's no doubt you get a spike on it. It's like, okay, what's that all about? You always get some good action in the metals on Fed Day, especially around 2 o'clock, right? Bonds oh, will go a little crazy. Yeah. Metals will go a little crazy. And, of course, the indices may as well. But you definitely see it in whether it's the dollar, you do. gold, silver, and, of course, interest rates, bonds. Yeah. And, you know, the what you, what you have here, now, the, the dollar certainly hasn't, you know, it's taking its time trying to get down to this lower end, man. I mean, you know, it looks like it wants to go, but 97,107 is the number with 97,426. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are going to be coming right back. We'll have those uh, oil numbers for you, the gas numbers. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Come right back. The TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale is back. For two weeks only, we're offering the largest bonuses of the year on all Tiger Dollar purchases. Normally, you can get a 10 to 20% bonus on your purchase, but for the Tiger Dollar Holiday Special, we've doubled the normal bonuses where you can now get up to a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars can be used for all TFNN newsletters, products, or services are fully transferable and never expire. If you're a current TFNN newsletter subscriber, then this this is a great time to buy Tiger Dollars and apply them to all your future transactions for instant added savings. And if you're considering signing up for any TFNN newsletters, webinars, or products in 2020, then get up to a 40% bonus now before this sale ends Sunday, December 22nd. For all the details and to purchase your Tiger Dollars with up to a 40% bonus, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's down 12, Nasdaq up 22, S&P's up three and a half, and we uh, we got a rise of what, 822,000? We sure do. So API had a rise last night too. They were talking about in the, in the den and crude oil inventories rising. Expectation had been for a decline. Gas inventory is rising much more than they had expected. 5.4 million barrels. Oh so with that in mind, let's jump back to the charts, see where we're trading at. And we got quite a drop, man. Look at that. As you'd expect, right? Market was looking for a decrease in stockpiles. You actually get an increase. And this is where you talk about, man, if you're going bullish, you're capped out at $59. Right. What those trades we were looking at, you know, right away, you don't even have a chance to get out if you're trading this in the futures market as that blips down in a, right. in a heartbeat to 58.88. And uh, if you looked at the bearish side, not a bad trade. We were getting in at 59. 25, that would have been our bearish side of the contract. Already, you would have $46 of value on the bearish one uh, with that acceleration to the downside. So $60, maybe just not yet, man, in the price of crude yeah, uh, that, with that, a build of uh, 800,000 barrels, yeah. Yeah, it's because uh, you say 58.79. See, that's the number yeah. that we just went over for four days, but guess what? It's it's a number that... Oof. And you, you back it up. I mean, like, we just, I mean... This level we read out early this morning on two occasions. We're under that now. And, um, you know, you're all the way back to Tuesday action in a heartbeat. Yeah. Lots of energy out here. In fact, here, yeah, well, let, let's go to CVX, uh, the Chevron. So check this out. This is pretty intense, man. So Chevron is down I saw. 70 cents. Now, $11 billion. Is that a lot? Yeah. Now, this is a write down, folks, okay? Um, that Chevron basically said, hey, listen, I don't think our assets are going to come back to those levels again. Yeah. Um, they expect to write down $11 billion in the fourth quarter, more than half of its uh, Appalachian natural gas yeah. assets after the slump in prices. More than half of it from the from, Appalachian yeah. um, natural gas assets. So, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty, $11 billion. $11 so, billion. And they, they talk about the U.S. oil majors considering the sale of shale gas holdings, according to the statement the company said separately and intends to exit its stake in the Kitimat liquefied natural gas project in Canada, and Chevron also plans to keep its 2020 capital budget at $20 billion the third consecutive year. It has not boosted spending. So natural gas uh, prices really hitting that, yes. um, their, their assets, and, and as it should. You know, if, uh, if, if it, you it, have an asset and that's based saying, off a commodity, and that commodity price plummets, yeah. you better not be valuing that asset on your balance sheet at a price that doesn't make sense because that's a long-term problem, man, and that's really... It's it, cooking the books. Yeah, it, I was going to say, it gets into, uh, what do you call it, you know, SEC criminal behavior even at some point when you... Because you get to you get to borrow against that money, right? Oh, yeah. You get to leverage against that money, and that's where companies really go bad. When And that's why mark-to-market is so essential on most things because when you have assets on your balance sheet, you use it to further leverage yourself. Those valuations are off. That's where you really get into trouble. I mean, that's where that home crisis was in 2008. You had all these assets on so, people's books that yeah. were just hogwash. Right. You know, it, it, so it's, let's go to the natural gas market for a second because this is really, you know, it's saying that the, the budget also, folks, okay, says quite a bit that, you know, anyone in their right mind, a picture if we all had just a little small business or whatever, you're not going to put more money into the research to make the business bigger when you feel that, no, there's... there's Prices that aren't going to make you money. Right. You just and have to write down $11 billion in that market. Why right. are you even in that market if that's what's happening? Totally. Yeah. And you can see it. This natural gas price is pretty devastating. Oh, man. Just, I mean, even, just even since the last two this. months. Yeah. Yeah. Three bucks to 220, man. And that's, I mean, that's, that's $8,000 a contract. Just yeah. so you wrap your head around that, folks. And it's little... so unusual that some, they only trade they have $3 and get on a dollar. Now, <laughs> here's what's interesting, right? Check out the three year chart. Oh. Yeah. And this is where they talked about. You know, they haven't spent more money over three years. They're right. keeping it the same. They had a they had an above three dollar price for a, a while. That, that was, was just holding steady, right? right. Um, let alone put it on a weekly, back it up to like a five year. And this is the January, so we're getting weird. But you get the general consensus here. Man. Right. It, that is not a strong chart. And man, oh man, this year just been really tough. Yeah. And that's where they probably said, you know what, we we have to write this down, man, because we were we were flirting above three, holding steady for a while. We were at four and five, four or five years ago. And now the new norm is 240, 220, 250, whatever it is, right? And we'll put this, I'm going to put this on a much longer one so we can really... Perfect. That'll give the, a little bit more clarity in that chart. Oh, boy. Here we go. 25 hold years. Hold on. Hold on. Right. Here we go. Why not, right? They, I get it on a monthly 25 years. Just take a few minutes to get... Look at this, man. Right. That's pretty intense. Like, it is. So if we bring this back... 
Well, it's $1.68 in 1997. Where are we at right now? We're right there. Okay, so what is that? Even that. Buck 76. Yeah, 2000, 2001. 225. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, what a, that's, that's oh, a mess. For sure. And even if you clear out some of the, the craziness that occurred here, right, you still have a chart that when you back things up, man, I mean, yeah, we had a reprieve down there at one point to 161. Yeah, that wants to be. So that's two dollars and two cents at the top of that bar, folks. Yes, that's game. That's game to get tested. What's the bottom of the bar over there? The, the, the far right. Right here. Yeah. 202. Yeah, same deal. See, oh, that's sure. that wants to get tested. Yeah. Why not? Right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, okay. definitely. And I wonder when they when they accrued some of those assets. At the Appalachian that yeah, they wrote down. Has. Yes. I don't know. It's, it's, it's higher than where we're at right it, now, it's, probably. It's, it's amazing that, I mean, General, I mean, General Electric, they, they bought uh, all those oil assets when oil was like $120. $120. They should have been buying solar panels. Oh, my God. <laughs> Seriously, man. Yeah. That, that's pretty intense. It is. Let's go take a look and see uh, some of the higher volume equities and see what we have uh, moving out here in the marketplace. Last couple of days, folks, I mean, you get markets going sideways with light volume. Um, Slack's down uh, 144. Oh, Children's Place, that, that thing's getting smoked. That's down $15 at $55. We'll can, we, can we pull yeah. it up just because yeah. I want to get into GameStop as well. A couple right. of earnings misses, man. So biggest drop after weak earnings, disappointing forecast suggested to City that former Jimbery customers are quitting the mall altogether. Wow. Let's just see if we get into this weak earnings that they talk about here. Okay, so here we go. Fiscal year adjusted, 5 to 520. They were looking for 540 to 575. Fourth quarter, buck 48 to buck 68. They were looking for 206. Man, sales. That's a big miss, man. 504 million in sales. The estimate was 555. That's like a 10 plus million. And then, uh, excuse me, ten percent miss on you know millions and there. The margins, margins across the board. They basically miss. Look how small on, the margins are, man. It's almost like a grocery store. Five point seven percent to five point nine. And you know what probably happens is when you, when you're expecting to take in five hundred and fifty-five million, yeah. and you're only going to take in five hundred four, that's a huge miss in terms of that's where you know you already that's probably on the same amount of employees in the stores, right? Yeah. Same amount of rent you're paying. Oh yeah. Okay, so all those are fixed costs. Right. And you just miss that, you know, oh, area yeah. to make some margin where you barely survive. Yeah. Let's go to uh, Jim in Denver, Colorado. Hey, Jim, what's going on? Uh, hello, Tom. Hello, Tommy. Morning, Jim. Hey, thanks for taking the call. Watch you guys all the time. We appreciate that. Man. Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much. I subscribe to Steve Rhodes. Sweet. And, um, you know, my wife, who's a lot luckier than I am, has some Apple stock. Um, and we were thinking about selling it, but it looks like it's broken the all-time highs and might, like, go to 300 or something. So, so I was wondering what you were thinking. Okay, stay right there. We'll, we'll, okay. we'll have a short break. We'll come right back. Uh, okay. Bottom line is that... <laughs> Not a bad year to be an Apple no, shareholder. No, a great year to be an Apple shareholder. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the uh, Dow Industrials right now. Trading down to 28. NASDAQ is up 20. SPs are up two and a half. We're going to be coming back with our man Jim from Denver, Colorado. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down 18. Nasdaq's up 23. S&P's up 3.5. We're talking with our man Jim from Denver. We're talking about Apple. You know, th this is, uh, I mean, she has quite a score there. There's no two ways about it. So, uh, you know, you always say, okay, are you going to sell a big winner like that? Well, it really depends on how long or what she's going to do with the money first, right? Right. And then, you know, is this going to keep going? Well, it should have a retracement, that's for sure, okay? But on, okay. A, lo on a longer basis, I mean, we're in, you know, these, these large companies basically have taken over just about everything, um, you know? So, I mean, I was, I was looking, I'm not suggesting this, but what does get cool, depending on how many shares that you have, is that, you know, I, I was just looking at the January 270 calls, right? Okay. So let's picture that if you're if you're going to sell at a 270, and you're really just selling it because you think it's too high and you might buy it back again, you could sell a 270 call for seven hundred and fifty-five dollars per hundred shares, and then you cover the 262. Not that that's a lot because Apple can go down forty bucks in a heartbeat. You know what I'm saying? You understand how that works, Jim? Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. A, I got a rough idea and I have to review it again, but. Right, yeah, no, right. I, just for everybody, Joe's yeah. asking, you know, basically you sell the call, right? So you receive the $7.65 per share just for everybody else out there. Right. And so you automatically then are basically in the same way protected because if you sold it at 270 now you could sell it at 262.50 and end up with the same amount of money, which right. is the $7 in exchange. But what happens is, is that if that starts trading above that level, you'll get it called away from you, right? right? So when you own the shares, it's different. What right, I mean, yes. I'm not saying it's different. And th this is, it's, it's a good strategy, folks, if you understand options and you're going to sell the stock. And, and this is the kicker, that you don't think the stock's going to take a monster hit. Well, you that's know the I mean? big kicker, right? And that's, that's the because big if, kicker, yeah. To put know? it out, right, if Apple goes down to 250 you've now lost $20 in the price of the share. That's and right. you've only collected $7 in the options so you've Not, actually lost twelve dollars right, per share right um and you have till january 17th you know how long has she owned it uh well seven years i think she's that's awesome several, several years i'm sorry hey that's several awesome no matter what you know, it, uh, it's quite a how should i say it's uh She's, she's gained a lot. Yeah, it's yeah. The, um, even the last two or three years. I mean, you, you might not see something like uh, that run that Apple's had in many equities in a long time, especially because it was such a mature stock at that point right. to have that type of a growth. Right. 
You don't have to sell all of it. Yeah. That's the other side of it. Do you know what I mean? And it really, yeah. I would say that two different things end up happening. Is that if you're going to sell it, I would make sure you know what you're going to do with the money first. Okay. Um, because I, I like the idea. I mean, if, the, if you get a score and I know I'm swapping money from one bucket to another, that's, that, I like how that works, okay? You don't necessarily just want to be sitting there in cash and saying, okay, I sold it just because it's high. You know what I'm saying? And, right. You know, because I think, you know, Apple, Google, Amazon, I mean, they, I think yeah. they'll be around for a long time. Yeah. I think, you know, we're not at the beginning of this, but we're certainly not close to, uh, you know, the middle. I mean, do, do you know what I'm saying? So, but so you think it, it could go up a lot higher, but it would take a while probably. It will. And well, because if we look at Apple, so watch what happens. I bring this back in a monthly. What you're going to see is that Apple had consolidated for a long period of time. And then, well, it's not that long. I mean, it consolidated. What's this? Well, yeah, you could say 2014. November 2014. Yeah, well, three years. It consolidated. Two and a half. Yeah. yeah. February of 17. And, and then it took off. Um, that pullback, just to put it in, nobody thought it was going to go from 233 to 140 just right. a year ago, though. So right. that's kind of the dicey part about that, right. of course. Yeah. That I'm sure you know, Jim, because that, that was quite exactly. a pullback. Yeah. But if it's a long-term deal, because there could be some volatility, Apple really prone to the tariff it deal. Is. We have we have tariffs coming down the line Sunday. So, you That's know, if, if yeah. you're if you're gonna be a long term holder in it still, if it's something that you plan on getting out of it anytime soon, sell some of it. You might have an, yeah. an opportunity because even if the, the talks get extended, right? Does that mean they're not going to get pulled back? Does that mean the president's not going to get out there and threaten to reinstitute those tariffs in which you might see some volatility in Apple? So they're kind of prone to that deal. And no matter what happens before Sunday, I think we all know that's going to persist as uh, time goes yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. You, I mean, she has a good problem. There's no doubt oh, about man. that. <laughs> I look at it. That buy at so, 140, man, was just you know, quite that, a year for Apple. It is. So the, the real question is, is that, you know, more, more, I, I would say that if, if I was in that position, I'd sell some of it. Because when you look at that chart, it's like, okay, man, you know, we, on a six-month chart, let's just say that, yeah, I mean, even just 192 five months ago to 269, yeah. that's, you know, for a large 35%. company. That, that, you don't, 35% you don't, you don't, on, on a company you that's already that. running the world I mean? practically. Yeah. I, wouldn't get, I wouldn't totally get out of it. But the bottom line is that she can sell some of the shares and still do very well. What are you going to pay? A 15% tax. You got you to figure the tax implications in it, too. Do you oh. know what I mean? That's the other side of it. Yeah. You now, know, what I'll add well, into it, you might her, see. Her gains are going to offset my losses. <laughs> no, no, that's even better. If that's the case. Now, listen, folks. What did you, no, I'm, I'm totally serious about that because what ends up happening, everyone should be doing this right now, folks, okay? You should try to figure out. I mean, if you have a. If you have a loss that you've been carrying forward even three or four or five years on your taxes, right, go look at them because if that loss is there, you, can, you, you should be taking that gain to put it off because that is exponential money because that's money found because you're already sitting, like you might be sitting with a ten, twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 loss going forward because you only can write off 3000 a year, okay? Right. So if that's the case, that's a whole different ballgame, man. I mean, I, I love when that happens yeah. it, because then you are paying nothing and... And you shouldn't be because their loss is offsetting the gains. That's right. So and that, right, and yeah. that loss, okay, bottom line was that most times in your tax forms was, it could be five years ago, seven years ago, and whatever. Yeah. But you want to get rid of it because that's found money, man. Now, the only thing I'll add to it, Jim, I'm an iPhone owner myself. Uh, I have an 8 Plus right now, so I haven't gotten the 10. I haven't gotten the 11. I'm waiting for the 5G phone. I'm trying to. We'll see if it lasts out. So th I think Apple's going to get a boost, man, when they come out with the yeah. 5Gs, because I think there's a lot of people, and they've done well with this, you know, issue of their phone, which was kind of a hold off. They were worried about it. They've done well. And when they push out a 5G, I think there's a lot of people, that'll be the first real reason in a long time, besides just an upgraded camera, yeah. besides an upgraded speed, there's an actual definitive difference between the last phone and the new phone, which will be a 5G. So I imagine that they'll get a, a boost, and it'll be leading up to that. It won't be the day of. You know what I mean? It'll be leading up to that release that people are saying they're going to have another big round of iPhone sales, which they don't even tout in their earnings anymore because right. they do so much cloud revenue. Right. So, so now your head's really spinning. You got all avenues of it, man. <laughs> yeah. So 
you can't go wrong with Apple. That's the bottom line, man. But you can't go wrong taking some of that money. <laughs> and you in. can't go wrong. If you get a tax loss carried yeah. forward, man, just yeah. do it. I'd, I'd match it up, man. Because that's found money. That's found money, man. And every year, sometimes I forgot to do it last year, and I'm saying to myself, why did I just, I could have done hey, this in two seconds. Tax planning. Get on it. it no, it's Get a big on deal. It. I know, man. For sure. I know. Okay, Cooking, thanks. brother. Well, thanks for the help. Have thanks for the call, Jim. Have a safe one. Hey, see you. Bye. Dow. Dow's down 41. Nasdaq's up 19. S&P's up one and a half. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is down 54. Nasdaq's up 15. S&P's are flat. And, folks, as you come over to our website at TFNN, you're going to see right under featured content, Tiger Dollar Sale. It's uh, the holiday time, and uh, we only do a couple of these a year. We sure uh, do. Yeah. If that, and uh, this is the best deal that you're going to get all year, no matter what, we maybe do a couple. You can get up to a 40% bonus, two weeks only. We're already almost through the first week, man. Runs through next Sunday. So that's December 22nd, 11 days from right now. That's all. Pretty remarkable Crazy. as Christmas creeps up on us all. I better start shopping. Now you better, man. Get on Amazon. Let's go. <laughs> Bezos needs that cash. Um, so you can get, we've doubled the bonuses. Normally it's 10, 15, or 20%. 20% is the max you can get. Yeah. Right now, through the 22nd, you can get a 20%, 30%, or 40% bonus. 
You spend 500, you get 600 Tiger dollars, that's a $100 bonus. You spend 1,000, you get 1,300 Tiger dollars, that's a 30% bonus or 300 additional Tiger dollars are added to your purchase. And you spend 1,500, you receive 2,100 Tiger dollars, that's a 600 Tiger dollar bonus, 40%. You apply them right to your account, automatically debited from anything you're going to do, whether it's monthly transactions going forward, six-month transactions going forward, yearly subscriptions for newsletters, webinars, services, software, whatever it is, check it out, and that runs through the 22nd. Great deal, man. Add some savings. And you, as you're over there, folks, uh, check out Tommy's morning report. I yeah. Mean, we have a... We got a lot going on today, man. We do. Fed day. We, do. we had some good action out here. I had uh, GameStop, of course, in there. Yeah. I had Boeing in there. You got the Fed. I got the chart of... Uh, so you do the morning report, then you do an afternoon wrap-up, right? That's right. Okay. So we got in there talking about the Fed, of course, Boeing. That was early this morning. Um, GameStop, all that good stuff. And Game to finish it up... Why isn't GameStop out of business? Oh, man. 23% comp sales. Talk about out of business. How about oil? Look at that move. Down a dollar on those big... Uh, on the surplus. Stay right there, folks. Thank you so much coming up next. And I'm Amos DeBell. The tap Steve Rhodes. Dave Wright. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Bam! Look at him, folks.